Hey, everybody, and welcome to Conversations for Peace. I'm Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and here we are, day 22, talking about peace. Yesterday was the International Day of Peace, and I had many conversations about peace. In fact, the whole day long I was celebrating. And I hope that you were too, because when we start to celebrate something really worth celebrating, we are automatically aligning with the higher part of ourselves, the part that is in alignment with who we really are, source of all of creation. And so when we start to engage this power, we can start to see things differently, very differently. And so today I was reflecting on some of the conversations I've had and how interesting they have been from different people's perspectives, as well as what people are willing to do to find peace in their own lives. And I was thinking of this one conversation where um, we were talking about different ways to cultivate peace. And then this person said, um, to tell you the truth, it's just too hard. <laughs> I was a little taken aback and I thought about it for a second. And the truth is, is that sometimes it is really hard. It's hard work. We have to let go of whatever it is that's standing in our way from reconnecting with peace. <clears throat> and I know that there are often things that stand in our way that we might not want to stop doing. It's kind of like a child who is throwing a tantrum or stomping their feet. They just want to, they just want to have their own way. And to be able to be angry and still have peace. It's not possible to still, you know, see themselves as a victim and have peace. It's not possible to attack somebody else and still have peace. Not possible. And so we were talking about the fact that what's so important is to really start to begin to observe how you are and who you are, particularly around other people. And it was interesting because something came up that I think may um, actually speak to a couple of people listening. And that is, is that there is a certain um, programming that a lot of people have where they are, they are um, making fun of other people or condescending to other people because it lifts them up. It makes them feel bigger and better. In fact, of course, there's nothing further from the truth. But there are a lot of behavioral patterns that integrate that separation that is automatically done when there is a fear of someone else being better, more lovable, more likable, maybe funnier, prettier, um, smarter, whatever it is, whatever has triggered an insecurity in you where you start to create these fictitious scenarios about that person. Oh, they can be that because, and I can't do this because, and they're really, you know, blah, 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 and you're not really seeing the true them, and going on and on and on, creating all of these continual false beliefs, just trying to save face. And so I was thinking about that and thinking about the fact that what peace is really doing is it calls us out. It calls us out for ourselves. We must observe who we are. We must observe our patterns of behavior and particularly how we are with other people. Because if we don't, we will automatically go into those 
areas where we essentially are attacking other people but in truth we're attacking ourselves because we are believing something false about ourselves that we are in some way less than that other person so as i started to think about this even more i realized it was pretty clear that whenever we're not in a state of at least reaching for peace we are full on in that energy of the ego. There cannot be anything but the energy of the ego outside of peace, because peace is the alignment with the true self. You're a divine being. You are source energy, and you are in this body to express that. You're here co-creating everything you're experiencing. And so when we deny the power that we have, when we deny that there is a higher self, another version of us that's in alignment with all of those gifts and all of those systems that are put into place to really allow us to show up in this world, when we're in denial of that, of course we're going to start to attack someone else because we'll always look at someone else as more than we are. So this whole ego um, and the energy of it, of course, is consumed with fear. It's at the very basis of all that it is and all that it believes. And so if at any time you are buying into not being enough, not being as much as someone else, um, comparing yourself, judging yourself, intentionally creating separation. I just want you to know you have to accept the fact that you're full on in that energy of the ego and it's all fear-based because that's what the ego is, fear. So how do we get out? Well, you have to just stay committed and one of the things you have to be committed to is just letting go of those shenanigans. And that's what they are. They're like these <clears throat> childlike behaviors. Well, he did it first and she said that. And, you know, it's, it's these modes of separation. Shenanigans, stories, fantasies, fictitious. And so we have to give them up. And we do that because we know that when we do, we're suddenly free to step into that wave of energy that holds everything that we really want to experience. In particular, all those things that we're afraid that somebody else has and we don't. What are those things? Love, creativity, freedom, happiness, joy, prosperity, abundance, compassion, all the things that are fully present in our higher self, the higher version of us that's true, the true version of us. And so we have to start asking ourselves, okay, what do I want more? The shenanigans or the happiness? The shenanigans or the freedom? The shenanigans or peace? It's what's waiting for each of us. But it does take your willingness to pay attention to your initial reactions to every person that you meet. And this is huge because if you automatically are creating a separation, you will never be fulfilled in any aspect of relationship. Relationship is about coming together, finding commonalities. And so peace comes from finding commonalities and connection. And so I'm going to just leave that with you. Um, I think it's a very 
important endeavor to just pay attention to your reaction within yourself when you come in contact with another person, whether it's on the phone, whether it's in person, or you're watching them on television. If you start to judge, separate, see yourself as anything better than, than they are or smarter or they're smarter or better than you, doesn't matter which way you're going there. Separation is what you will experience in every aspect of life. So come back to peace, come back to connection, and come back to your true self, your higher self, the bigger, grander version of you. And that peace beyond all understanding is waiting there. Okay, so if you haven't yet gotten your copy of Seven Ways to Cultivate Peace, or your copy of the Peace Pledge, please go to heartshiftcoach.com and find it and really start to energetically build the foundation for you to experience all the things that you have come here in your heart so desperately yearns for. And if we do this together, as we collaborate and we join forces for peace. Peace is what we will all experience. So here's my peace pledge for you. I pledge to extend peace into my entire circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, taking personal responsibility for how I react when I am in contact with another person, taking responsibility for my thoughts, my beliefs, my choices, my actions, and of course the experiences that all of those things produce, create. And if it isn't for my highest good, it's not going to be for your highest good. So I am here to tell you that I'm taking responsibility on my end. I also know that that will lead me to take compassionate action. And this is an enormous step for self-love. It is when we choose to love ourselves enough, to let go of the shenanigans, step out of it, and step into the truth of who we are and find the peace. So I'm taking this peace pledge, and I, of course, am passing it from my peaceful heart to yours, because I know that peace is in your heart, too. And so peace begins within, peace in, peace out, and we will continue to follow this peace trail. And so I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful night and um, lots of conversations about peace. Let it be. Let it be what you create and you'll never look back. Good night.